I grew up with the stories of war. I was born much later. The war ended between Bangladesh and Pakistan. It happened in 1971. But half of my family was killed, and a large part of them were refugees. I grew up with these stories. So I went inside the Rohingya camp, and I found something that I've never seen before. I'm sure other photographers have seen it, but I haven't seen it in my life. And that very moment, it was not the Rohingyas, to be honest. It was my mother. It was my family. Those memories came back. And I walked through the aisles, uh, the life, you know, it's very difficult there. And I felt touched. I felt that I should do something here. The Rohingyas are mostly ba in Bangladesh, uh, but a large, um, most of them are in Bangladesh. Um, but through UNHCR and through uh, IOM and through other international organizations, your embassy and the European organization and embassies, are helping people to resettle outside um, Bangladesh. The resettlement number is pretty low. I think not more than a few thousand have been resettled. But I, f I found it's very interesting to follow these people. And, uh, you know, they, d they don't know how to speak in English. They have never been, they never lived in a house with a running water. They have never seen a fan on or over their head. Uh, this, that's a horrible life to live. And suddenly they are here in England or in Australia or in Canada or in Malaysia or someplace else. Having those, uh, having those lives is fascinating. And I felt that it, it should be a story of both. So I think it's very important that someone tells the story from within in their own way. I think it's very, very important that to show people, because you know, the world has seen us through the eyes of, I'm sorry to say this, but the white photographers from the West. And it is not the way we look into our life. When I, as I have to work for an agency, and when, when there is a cyclone or a flood, the kind of images that they are looking for, I hate to provide it, and I don't provide it. And then, and then, then the, they don't provide me assignments, naturally. <laughs> but I, it's a very stereotypical way of representing Bangladesh. I'm not going to say we don't have any problems. I'm not in favor of Taliban. I'm not in favor of political Islam. No way. But you know, it, you have to go deeper. And only who lives there all his life and lived through what has happened can photograph it. I believe that firmly. My first work was on political violence, and it was on the rise of political Islam and everything. And um, unfortunately, the government that was in power back then was very much part of it. They were the people who were bombing people. It's a complicated story. In the middle of the project, I received a phone call in a weekend from the NGO. Because many of my good, very good friends work there, they called me up and say, how much you have got, you know, there was an entire fund. I said, I don't remember, maybe 40% or 60%. And how much is there, I mean, like rest? Then come tomorrow and take the check and don't work anymore. I was in the middle of it. It was a long, two year long project. And I was very, very shocked. And uh, I asked him why. He said, we got a call yesterday. And from now on, we cannot protect your life. We have been asked to stop this project. He was a great friend. He is a good guy, and I, we are very good friends. I told him, would you have said the same thing to a war photographer? If you have sent him to a war and say, let the war stop, then you take pictures? Because that project was very personal. It is not a project that I did because I was paid to do it. It was a project that touched me. I didn't want to see Bangladesh as the next uh, bloody Afghanistan or Pakistan, anywhere. I was not happy, like all those millions of people. Mm -hmm. And I knew how to take pictures, and I felt this is my duty to do it. I get out of the NGO, and I said, I will do it, no matter what happens. Even if you say, you will not give me the rest of the money. I continued, but things went really, really wrong. And to be very honest, this is the first time on camera I'm saying this, because I was afraid uh, the people who used to do it to me were in power, they were in government. Then I started receiving phone calls from those suicidal bombers, and they used to call me and say, we'll bomb the shit out of you. 
we'll bomb your house and things like that. We, I went to shelter. I changed my number. I kept on doing it. And I was very badly beaten. They tried to stab me, to kill me in one of those places when I was documenting the life of a boy who was bombed because of being in a cinema hall, because they were bombing cinema halls because they say that uh, it's un Islamic to see cinema halls. All those things happened. I never spoke about it because I was asked, don't do it, it will risk your life more. I ended up with my book. I finished the project for two years. Then eventually the government got to know about my book because it was funded by an NGO. Uh, the minister who was um, part of the fundamentalist Islamist party called up the country director and asked for a copy. And then they banned my book. I couldn't show my work. It was shown around the world, but I couldn't show it in Bangladesh. Thanks God, the government has changed. They have their own problems, definitely. But I haven't been able to show it. The life's not been easy, but it's okay. I don't complain. I knew it, won't, it will not be easy.